I want you to come with me into a very dark, nightmarish, surrealistic, weird, sexual, evil, relational, fever dream of a film. A newly married couple, car breaks down on the road. A familiar story that we'll see for a lot of horror films. They see a house. They need a phone. And from there, the nightmare begins. A nightmare that, unlike anything I've seen before, and anything unlike you have possibly seen before. Because for the next 74 minutes, you enter into a truly unique, artistic, weird, otherworldly world of a film. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1971's Dark Dreams. It says on the front here, a tale of erotic fantasy. Look at this beautiful artwork on the cover here. And this is put out by Vinegar Syndrome. This was a recent release uh, for them. And I purchased it for about, uh, I guess, it, well, it goes for about 15 bucks, something like that. And there's some screenshots in the back. And here we are, folks. Dark Dreams. An unknown, rare film that truly brings the horror genre the psychedelic genre and the erotic genre all together into an extremely unique X-rated experience of a film. For this is truly bringing you into something that you could watch during the Halloween season and something that will give you eerie creepiness of a horror film and also um, psychedelic sexual prowess and adventure where the story is being told sexually and horrifically and surreally. Let's get into this film here, folks. Supposedly, uh, it says in the back here, that um, this is the sole erotic film from the mysterious director Roger Guermantes, I believe it's pronounced. We also have two big actors in the X-rated genre in the Golden Age during his time, Tina Russell and Harry Reams. Um, Tina Russell definitely in a very unique role in this film, unlike roles that I've typically seen her in. So let's get into Dark Dreams from 1971. Here it is, folks, a very rare and unknown film from Vinegar Syndrome. First and foremost, we have to look at the sound design for this film and the score and soundtrack for this film. For this is a film that is the sound. Um, it's wall-to-wall -wall journey through sound in Dark Dreams. We have uh, one piece of music that is a kind of 70s soft rock hippie sounding piece of music that you could hear in lots of 70s films or something that, like the style I mean maybe something like in the film Blue Summer that I reviewed in this YouTube page you know a 70s road trip or 70s love story um, or even like a film like Last House on the Left you know it could have uh, vibes of that um of the uh, of the soundtrack in that film but it's only that one song here because for the rest of the film we have a ticking clock we have voices that sound like they are coming through AM radio or through a very old microphone and then we have eerie creepy oppressive, cacophonous, psychedelic music and sounds. We have jazz and funk meeting 
horror. Yes, how do you take those and meld them together? Well, Dark Dreams does it. But then we also have a couple pieces that are just jazz funk, something that you would almost hear in a in, in an X-rated film. You know, that kind of grooviness. But there is an eerie quality to all of the proceedings as we hear bass lines, as we almost hear what sounds to be a rattle on a rattlesnake, as we have a score using human voices making sounds. If you're familiar with the musician, the singer Mike Patton, you can look him up. He has a couple solo albums, although he's in a lot of different bands, where he uses his voice as the sole instrument. This film has sound score like that. I've never heard another movie score like this one that reminded me of Mike Patton's work, but very experimental, avant-garde, uh, raw vocal music. Okay, if that makes sense. You know, like stuff like that, okay? Um, but then we also have very slow creepy jazz and funk melding with horror and the surreal. We also have Middle Eastern belly dancing music in one section of this film. Um, you know, interestingly enough, this is a film inside of a house filled with many rooms and many doors. And in that way, it reminded me a bit of the film uh, Corruption, uh, also released from Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, it reminded me a bit of that in some way, um, but you know it's 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 interesting because we have elements in this film um, that also reminded me of just a piece of the storyline of Hostel. Just a piece, not much. Um, we have candles burning, people disappearing, people morphing, uh, magic herbs, witchcraft. A cult, uh, slavery, all mixed into this, into this nightmarish world of symbols on skin and joining. You know, there's a very wild editing and camera work in this film. Um, the opening of this movie is very, very unique as it's dialogue based with fog and a cauldron and really speaking almost educationally about the different types of magic uh, and the occult. And then we have this unbelievable opening credit sequence with, un with just lush camera work and, and, and the most beautiful and mesmerizing sun flares uh, that I've seen in film and a powerful uh, credit sequence uh, in, in driving on a lonesome road uh, in, in what seems to be the winter with snow on the ground. I saw a New York license plate. And we also have some freeze frames utilized in this film as snapshots edited together in very mysteriously bizarre ways. We also have slow motion work in this film. Um, we have something that I don't think I've ever seen in a camera before, which almost looks like the screen. It happens a couple times where it looks like the shot is shaking or melting. Never seen anything like that before. And there are some very abrasively surrealistic edits and cuts in this film um, that give you a piece of what is to come, a piece of maybe a timeless quality of things happening simultaneously or things happening in another world, in the supernatural or in the mind, and then what is real, because 
there is a quality to the editing and to the story and to the visuals in this film that don't follow a time scheme whatsoever. You know, in one scene, somebody is fully clothed and then all of a sudden it cuts to them not being clothed, but with the same person, um, sexually speaking. And, and there's a very haunting shot in this film of the outside of the house, stagnant and haunting. And looking up at the window, almost reminding me of the end of the original Black Christmas. Um, this is a film of faces. This is a film of skin and glistening skin. Sometimes not even knowing where you are looking at on the body. For the vast majority of this film has no dialogue. But when, when there is dialogue, it's very intriguing and very interesting. The woman who plays the witch, Harry Reams... Excellent, excellent work. Uh, Tina Russell's playing a very unique role in this film. Very, very vulnerable. Um, a very uh, pained, newly married uh, relationship, and and kind of the 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 a view of sexuality in a new marriage bed, and a view of virginity, and a view of sexuality in commitment, and in and in culture, and in society, and and, and in the world, and. We have characters with no names, and, and, but, but, but symbols. We have characters. There's this uh, wondrous scene inside of a shower, and it's hazy from the water. The water is violently moving um, as it looks like the camera is shooting through, you know, kind of a glass door of the shower. But in a very unique way, the sex scenes in this film, of yes, they're 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 hardcore. Yes, they're explicit. But they're not that explicit that you would typically see in an X-rated hardcore film. Um, it's interesting how much focus there is on breasts. It's interesting how much focus there is on kind of the top half of the body, and really the only you know, uh, internal butt shots that we have in this film are of a male character, uh, which is very interesting. Um, you know, yes, you know, we have, uh, th th there's no ejaculation in the film. There's no ejaculation shots in the film. So that kind of shows you something in the X-rated world. Uh, this is, it says in the back of the, the disc that this is, um, one of the earliest attempts at a hardcore crossover film. Um, this is a, a, a very psychedelic, horrific, artistic, sexual nightmare of a film. I mean, you can almost see uh, David Lynch mixing, um, you know, in, 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 a, in a world of creepy haunted house film, um, a cult film. I almost got uh, elements of the film Black uh, Candles, which I've also reviewed in this YouTube page. Um, this is an incredibly uh, unique combination of a film, and it is something if you turn all the lights off in your house, you will enter into uh, you know a 74-minute world unlike anything, and it's unnerving. Everything is unnerving. Everything is eerie. There's a weirdness. There's a quality to this that is unnerving, even in the first frames of the film with the newly married couple. This is 1971's very dark journey into 70s psychedelic horror sex dark dreams. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more like 1971's Dark Dreams.